everybody. So, you ever watch something that brings a special joy to your heart, even though you feel like you shouldn't like it, it's gross and dirty, like besides this show? <laughs> Well, a 7-Eleven in Stockton, California, almost became yet another victim of the wave of brazen theft sweeping the country. Gone are the days when shoplifting meant putting a Snickers in your pocket, then telling the cashier you're just glad to see them. Ew. Now shoplifting means lifting the whole shop at once and humiliating you in the process. Roll it. This is not what's all I'm telling you. This is not what's all. Hey, let me get a swish it though. Can I get a strip? Hey, hey, can I get a can I get a swish? Let me get a swish. The brother asked for one swisher. Can a brother break, please? Hey, just let him go. There's nothing you can do. But it's nothing you can do. It's like they're not gonna do nothing. You just have to just play with your insurance. Do you have insurance? What? Does you have insurance? Yeah, you got insurance. No, this is, it, it hurts you. You better not. Ain't nothing you can do, though. Ain't nothing you can do, man. Tell you call police. Stop playing. Ain't nothing you can do, man. Tell police come on. Watch out, Hey, hey, no, you, hey, don't. Hey. Watch out, boss. Ain't nothing you can do, man. It's infuriating to watch, right? Even worse, it got me in the mood for a smoke. <laughs> but we all feel how the people in that store must feel hopeless, which is a weird thing when you're told law and order exists. We know it doesn't anymore. So this looks like all the other smash and grab videos we're seeing every damn day, just another criminal getting away with it. It's true, hog and dawes and toothpaste get locked up while the thieves roam free and it's happening everywhere. And why? You heard the guy filming it mention insurance. The idea being, hey, you're insured against theft anyway, so who cares, right? Just wait until the cops come. Then when the cops come, take your statement, and then nothing ever happens because the local DA is too busy giving George Soros a foot rub. <laughs> and now the whole neighborhood knows your store is an easy target. Criminals will look at it like it's their parents' fridge as your insurance company finally says, lose my number. At least, well, that's what usually happens, but not this time. So let's see the rest of this video and then tell me how good you feel afterwards. Ain't nothing you can do, though. Ain't nothing you can do, man. Tell you call police. Stop playing. Uh -huh. no, 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 no. Ain't nothing you can do, man, Tell police come in. Hey, hey, no, you, hey, don't, hey. Watch out, boss. Ain't nothing you can do, man. Out, don't do that. Don't do that, man. Don't do that. That's called whooping your ass. That's called whooping your ass. Whoop his ass. It's okay to clap. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, talk about cleaning up in aisle six. I haven't seen a beat down like that since Larry Kudlow tried to try on Tyrus's belt. <laughs> That's my kind of convenience store, where thieves get their asses conveniently beat 24 hours a day. <laughs> and thank you, don't come again. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't like that it gives me joy to see a man hit with a stick, even if my Google search history says otherwise. <laughs> oh, look at that. It's unknown if the perp was armed, but clearly he acts like it. He's lucky he was hit with a stick and not a bullet. So what are the clerks supposed to do, wait to find out? So I gotta be honest, I loved every second of that because I love justice. I love seeing someone being punished after threatening their victims and then the victim exacting the punishment. And be honest, so did you. It's like we all felt it at once. It's clear who the bad guys are. We've had enough of them calling the shots. It's like twist, twi Twisted Sister once said, we're not gonna take it anymore. And they were men wearing makeup. <laughs> Talk about progressive. Here's some responses to that video on Twitter. Quote, I've watched this 87 times. 
I love the teamwork. Yes, amazing work, gentlemen. Feel good video of the day. It truly has brightened my day. In other words, people were saying the exact same thing. Thanks, I needed that. So is it really our fault to embrace violence? It's natural, however, to feel good when bad people are stopped. I mean, the movie industry has made millions over the years using that very same plot. And especially when the people in power let the abuse occur. Theft used to be illegal, but the politicians who aren't on the front lines changed that. And when creeps know law enforcement won't do it emboldens them to sweep your livelihood into a rolling trash can. So where's today's incentive to stop? I think you just saw it. The shop owners knew that too, because they eventually let the guy get up and let him walk out of the store. Maybe he'll spread the word that this place is a no-go zone, like Somalia, the south side of Chicago, or Brian Kilmeade's dressing room. <laughs> <coughs> Bottom line, when the rewards outweigh any punishment, it just makes sense to steal from hardworking people. That's the incentive the Democrats gave these criminals. Remember that the next time you pull the lever in the polling booth for somebody with a D after their name. You're a <laughs> idiot if you're still voting that way. <laughs> So, is it any wonder that we cheer the tired, hardworking minority shopkeepers when they literally fight crime? You know, it's not just stuff or insurance premiums. These scumbags are stealing the time these business owners sacrificed, the early mornings, the vacations they gave up to feed their families and serve their communities. They're the good guys. And the bad guys, be glad that stick didn't end up somewhere else, jerk face. <laughs> so, kudos. To that 7-Eleven guy for doing what needed to be done, he just showed us that when it comes to the carrot and the stick, <laughs> carrot, get the stick. <laughs> yes, welcome! Tonight's guest, she's the best thing to happen to Sunday since whipped cream and hot fudge, host of Fox News Sunday, Shannon Bree. <laughs> People are loving what comes out of his oven. Chef and restaurateur, Andrew Gruel. She can lift 100 pounds when robbing a bank in England. Fox News contributor, Cat Tube. And his ex tested positive for massiveness. My massive sidekick in the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Tyrus. Shannon, we were on together on The Five earlier, and you said during the break that you love a man with a big stick. <laughs> Did I? Is that an exact quote? Yes, it is. It is. I, I am willing to admit that that, was, that brightened my day. Is, is, what about, I mean, that... Well, and just listen to the reaction from the folks here and your audience who loves you so much. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, people do have this steam valve that is ready to explode. I think when they feel like they don't feel safe in their neighborhoods, they're waiting 20, 30 minutes for police to show up. Not cops' fault. I mean, if you don't have enough cops on the beat and you don't have enough people funded, they can only do what they can do. But people feel this frustration, and people have to be aware that when they create a situation in which people feel like there's no law and order in their community, they're going to react this way. And we don't want to create a vigilante situation, but if you don't enforce the laws or have people on bail, uh, you know, or any of those kinds of things, mm -hmm. this kind of stuff is going to happen. I wouldn't put this in the category of vigilantism because they're not actively going out. They're actually More defending themselves. a very themselves. heated self-defense. Yes, I would go. Any self-defense in my book is good and encouraged. Andrew, would you say that that guy, as a chef, is an expert at tenderizing meat? Oh my God! Oh my God! I mean, honestly, the uh, you know the the dirtbag cutlets that he made after that were nothing. <laughs> that five star Yelp. But here's the thing: things went downhill for 7-Eleven when they started selling sushi. So I got to throw that. Out there. <laughs> that and, is true. Dangerous. And, and and is the cameraman in on this or not? I mean, he was like bipolar here. Yeah, he I was mean, he was for, he was for the robber, and then when the, then he sold him out. Yeah, exactly. What a front runner. <laughs> yeah. And and, and and when these guys come in like Jackie Chan and Van Damme, this was the new age version of like an 80s kind of you know. The hero movie, yeah. I was excited. I jumped out of bed when I was watching this at 2.30 in the morning. Yeah. But they didn't cover that at the end. You know, when the guy was getting thrown out, he actually asked for a soda. He was like, well, can I have a soda on the way out? <laughs> like, that's what it's come down to. Is this right, right? Like, end cut scene, give me a soda. Give me a soda. Yeah. But he's going to go back, and he's going to tell all of his friends, don't go to that place. Yeah, yeah, the, the soda sucks. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Kat, I know you're a very pro-violent person. Uh, how did you take this video? 
I don't even like John Wick. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, I you never know what someone's going through, right? So maybe he needed those cigarettes to, <laughs> for his children. Yes. <laughs> He had children that were going through nicotine withdrawal mm -hmm. and they were very irritable and they kept getting in trouble at camp. Yes, that's exactly. <laughs> My God, now I feel terrible about yeah. the whole thing. He was a loving <laughs> father. His whole family is like, Daddy, we need vapes. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I got you. No, I know what it's like to have your cigarette stolen. Yeah. Because my brother, when I was like 18, I was home for the summer from college, and he kept stealing my cigarettes because mm -hmm. he was selling them to his underage friends at a premium. Yes. And I was like, stop stealing my cigarettes. He was like, what are you going to do, tell mom and dad? Mm -hmm. He had me. Yeah. Good point. I did you're not no think snitch. to do this. Yeah, I did not. Well, no, because I would get in trouble for smoking six. Yeah, exactly. That's true. Yeah, I mean, but also, didn't the guy like say at one point that he had a gun or something yes. like that? I feel like if someone says you have a gun, you don't wait to find out if they have a gun. No, no. If you no. have another option. Exactly. And in this case, it was a stick. Yeah. I mean, that was pretty. Tyrus, I, I need your analysis on this. Well, a couple things. Uh, the kid, his, I loved his enthusiasm, but his <laughs> rhythm was off on the answer. <laughs> One of the things effective, and I think a lot of parents who still use the golden rule, you got to talk during the ass whipping. Mm -hmm. See, if he would have been comfortable and be like naming every cigarette as he whooped his ass, would you like some more ultralights? <laughs> or do you want menthol, mother? <laughs> you have to. You have to. <laughs> you have to get more into yes. the beating. You have to enjoy your work. Yes. You know. The, and. Here's the, here's the sad part, and I said it to you during the video. Mm -hmm. We've already accepted this because the man videoing already had the <laughs> propaganda. There's yeah. nothing you can do. Let him go. He was high. He just wanted mm -hmm. his one cigarette. He wanted his Swisher Sweet. The, could you hand me the grape one? Didn't care where he got it from. <laughs> but that's the, the sadness of this is that we've accepted this mm -hmm. because in the old days, if I was in there and the guy probably would have helped him get him out of the store. Right. But now you got to video it. And why are you videoing it? He's making sure everyone know that he's not involved other than saying, let him go, let him go. Because there's going to be consequences, not just from probably that man will end up being charged mm -hmm. with some kind of assault because they got time to prosecute him. Right. And, or worse, we laugh. He will come back, mm -hmm. but this time he's not going to come back with a wallet in his pocket. Yeah. He's going to come back with a gun, or he's going to come back to make an example to the other store owners in the neighborhoods. You don't do this because there's no help coming, and that's the part that, that we laugh about it. They, they had a good day today, but now that man with the stick has to be looking over his shoulder all the time because there's no help coming because the people who are making these laws and these rules, they've already decided that this is the bottom of the barrel. Let them, Like we always say, Cracks a few eggs. Mm -hmm. As long as they're fighting in the dirt, they're not in my nice lawn. Mm -hmm. And that's the message that we're getting from the Democrats in these cities. So hopefully nothing bad happens, but I got a feeling you don't whoop a man's ass like that and he just go away. Yeah, yeah. Unless they put him in jail, which isn't obviously going to happen. Yeah. It is funny watching that guy, instead of helping him out, asking for a free cigarette, cigar. Yeah, yeah because that's, we're conditioned to be like, hey, he just made sure he was good. Yeah, that's it. And that's sad. All right, well, way to bring me down, Tyrus. <laughs> you know, we're all laughing, but when we see the guy's face rearranged three months from now, we're going to feel bad about it. So mm -hmm. That's why I'll have to go home and watch that video. That's again. why you got to vote. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.